going on, everybody? My name is Asana Hanu, and I thought I'd share some poems for this What the hell -a -thon. Hope everybody's staying safe, man. Take care of yourselves. This first one's called Simple Complexities. Three days before the sun cursed God, a lightning bug made love to a hurricane beneath the rose bush. They say the devil poked a hole in the star nine months later that bug gave birth to a tempest when that anomaly crowned king of ongoing despair, Mother Nature wet nursed it prophecy and celebration. Thunder snuck into a waterfall and stole the courage out of a larynx hidden by ruby faced cherubim. And I haven't been able to cry over my own pain since. At least that's the story I'm committed to telling. See, there's an anecdote for every falter, a metaphor for every aberration, and a million ways to pretend you're not broken. It's an eloquent show, like your heart hanging for your bullbab tree of a voice box, tongue branch hollow inside, your love, compassion, and understanding, black and blue picnic for the white noise of your insecurities to gawk and laugh at like, <laughs> you thought joy was welcome here? I've been begging to fall apart for some time now. The devil is in the duct tape, damn strong that it is. I've hated purpose for the graying it does so often when I want my angst to be so black and white. For sticking to the point that there is work to do, heaven realized I learned the trick the super glue nail polish removal at midnight had me in the arms of indulgence until it scratched me back free from this atlas of a burden. So I was given adhesive instead of wings and a pen instead of a halo. This is the parable of a sphinx Riddled with reasons and rationale, searching for a gypsy who can see tomorrow, one who can show me an answer in the mist of two onyx stones and dirt and a redwood treasure chest of pearls. This is the chapter and verse of a man's staff to lead, wishing for a mountain peak where I can converse with a burning sage and leave enlightened because of Moses running errands for a people who could care less about the seas he had to split will never find peace in people's expectations. They just end up praying day and night to escape the golden they have made their perceptions, absence of any real understanding of the work it takes to make promise tangible. I have shown people the glory of a gracious gift, expecting the reward of reciprocity. Instead, I'm left with a reputation for being a glorious tourist attraction. They say poems are where poets store the artifacts of their brokenness. So somewhere in this one is a map the details and adventure of understanding. Look carefully and you'll find revelations and hidden meanings and clues. There are cries for help and affirmations. I'm going to be okay. There are mirrors and flamethrowers, coloring books and unfinished suicide notes, altar calls and blasphemy. There are Dear John letters written to the hurt I left behind and birthday cards for the pain I'll know too soon. There are fortunes told. Promises unkept, endings unwritten, and doors dead bolted shut. But there is joy, y'all. There is joy. A self-determined dedication to the simple but complex amalgamation of magnificent God made me. And every night is an affirmation. Every morning is an opportunity. Every day breathing is a living testimony to the reverie of resilience. And see that. That is the story I'm committed to telling. This next one is for anybody who's ever found themselves in a situation where, you know, they expected to carry burdens, expected to, to be the strong one, the one to always be able to hold it together. It's called weight. God made my shoulders island. It is where the burden of beauty lies. There's an aqueduct along the nape of my neck. It ensures safe passage for the obligatory agreements. I call this expanse endangered. Most call it where the wild things are. This is the last refuge for people's passing fancy, a repository for the weight of their expectations. Other people's bullshit has become indigenous here. Tribes at war over this land they claim. Languages spoken here are all broken and bludgeoned. Bitter is a folktale written along the blades of the mountains. Settlers say the wise ones reside in a temple made of skull, burnt amber, and optimism. They say the temple was built facing away on purpose. That what goes on up there is too burdensome for this type of exorcism. Back here is a fair weather escape, a preservation for the unaccountable. Storms are for the other side of responsibility. Here are only the bastards of the unrequited. There be no bellowing thunder. There be no teary-eyed rainfall. Not back here. Only the shuddering of slumping mountains. Only the shrugging of rippling terrain. Here, 
Reciprocity is a monster spoken of to children by fire. They are taught that outsiders take and give nothing back in return. This dense jungle grows unrestrained, a blessing of untampered recklessness. Legends say travelers have called this place holy and sacred, left behind empty promises, better intentions, and the baggage they arrive with. This oasis is a freeing place for ships that dock but never stay, a paradise of remembrance considered better memory than homestead. The ecosystem is a wondrous exercise in weightlifting. Hapless romanticism calls this its natural habitat. Nights in this place are a sheet-pressed darkness. Days of fanciful colored escape from being kissed by the sun. Back here, environmentalism is the name of a self-induced purgatory. This is all this land has ever been good for, all that it will be. God made my shoulders island, a place remembered in distant conversations and photo albums by those who are only seeking exploration or research, a place, a place left isolated, inhabited by truths no one hopes ever migrates home. Yeah. This next piece is called Carrier Pigeon. Um, I always say that every poet, you know, should have a love poem. Um, I, I, the idea of not being able to write love poems, I think, is is something for poets that's it's a tragedy. Um, and I know poets who don't, but I also know that they don't um, because at the time, up until that moment, they hadn't come to know what love is or believe is possible. Um, but so many, you know, so many poets start by writing about love, even if it's young angst. So this is called Carry a Pigeon. I sat by the window imagining what I would send to you by carrier pigeon. Pictured the paper curled by hand and kept closed by red ribbon. I thought it would be written on it, how I would sign it, how happy I'd be to tell you what has been resting in my heart. Imagine something short, sweet, poetic, a well-crafted verse, both poignant and compelling, something to be remembered forever. That's when I realized that the weight of what I needed to say would be more anchor than purpose, that you can't wrap that kind of burden around a small bird's leg and it's still expected to fly. I've been planning how to capture an eagle ever since. Thank you. Well, I guess actually I could have given that to the pigeon. No, thank you. Thank you for every moment, for every smile, every laugh, for the conversations, for each embrace, for every kiss given, for nights together, for mornings wishing you didn't have to leave, for every date set, the anticipation that made the next moment so satisfying. Thank you. I think it's the right thing to say to someone who made me think about what the possibilities could be, someone who made me hope it would all come together, someone who made me believe it was all worth it. I mean, I should thank anyone who made me think, hope, believe. Each one is a blessing that makes you angel, made our moments a glimpse of heaven. Thank you. It's okay. Some things can go wrong. Doesn't mean it wasn't right. Just not right then. Before time, it was right then. Even if it was only right then, it was almost everything. Then it wasn't anything but a memory. Before memory to linger this long means everything. Means someone carved their name on my heart, etched their smile into my memory, that their personality lingers that their touch lingers, that their voice still speaks the same. Let's me know what it means to remember vividly. How can that not be appreciated? So thank you. Thank you for making me feel so comfortable. I wanted to take it slow. For making so much sense that I wanted to fight to keep us. For being so damn wonderful that I wanted you to let me in. That I didn't want to let go. Because of you, I got to know that what should matter still does. That this world hasn't bittered the knowing out of me. That I can spot a good thing, even if I don't get to be the one to call that good thing my own. I still pray for your happy, even if I don't get to contribute to it. I still wish for your peace, even if I don't get to help to secure it. Still think of your healing. Still call you special because you are. Thank you. That's it. That's all. Just thought you should know. Just believed that you should know. Just hoped that it would matter. <laughs> Damn. Yes, you're still doing it to me. Thank you. Now, I know this is longer than expected. 
Maybe I should consider a condor. <laughs> Signed, grateful. All right. Thank y'all for rocking with me. Um, I appreciate it. If you want to find me, I'm Desana Hanu on all social media. That's D-A-S-A-N-A-H-A-N-U. If you're on Facebook, my artist page is, um, you can go to It Is Desana Hanu. Um, and it'll take you straight to my artist page on Facebook. I'm on um, Twitter, Instagram, and all of that good stuff. My website is dasanahanu.com, D-A-S-A-N-A-H-A-N-U.com. Um, you can also find out more about Black Poetry Theater at blackpoetrytheater.com. That's T-H-E-A-T-R-E.com. That's a theater company in residence at the Haytai Heritage Center. And also at the Haytai Heritage Center, we have a monthly poetry slam series and a monthly workshop. That's the Jambalaya Soul series. Jambalaya Soul Academy is the workshop every second Monday um, from 6.30 to 8.30. Every third Saturday is the slam, bullcitypoetryslam.com. Bullcitypoetryslam.com is the website. Or you can go to the Haytai website, H-A-Y-T-I.org. All right. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.